world changed. I had my arm around her and my arm was resting on her leg. I thought, well, she probably liked that feeling. And so I put my hand between her legs and touched her, thinking this would be something she liked, like giving her a piece of candy. I heard this voice in my head that said, be more aggressive. And that's when I unzipped my pants. He put her hand on his privates and said to her, it would be really cool. It was almost like you know, when you're in high school and then you, you're first dating, that kind of excitement. I said to her, if anything like this ever were to happen again, I want you to run and tell the first adult you see. And she said, well, I did tell my grandma. I was giving her her bath and she didn't want her privates washed and I said, well, you look like you might be getting a little red and that's when she said to me, that's because Grandpa was rubbing my vulva. I just shouted, no, that must have been an accident. Grandpa wouldn't do that. I didn't think she would tell anybody. And I don't know if she would have if the situation in the bathtub wouldn't have occurred. She kind of was forced into <laughs> to telling. I did not call my son and daughter-in-law to tell them what she had told me. Right after Grace told me what happened to her, I wanted her to be able to tell my husband directly. Somehow I felt that was important. I had to hear it from my daughter. I didn't know what to do. It was just such a, such a blow. That next day, my husband and I confronted her grandfather and her grandmother. Confronting my parents was scary. It was kind of sickening. I said, do you have anything you want to tell us? Anything you want to confess? And Grandpa said, I don't know what you're talking about. And I thought to myself, if this man tries to tell me that my six-year-old daughter is a liar, I'm going to hurt him. And at that moment, he said, all I can say is, it happened. I was almost in shock, and I, I couldn't speak. I, I nodded affirmative. He just looked broken. As soon as he admitted it, his head dropped. And I don't think he looked at us the rest of the time. Todd was so conflicted. My heart was for protecting my daughter. His heart was for the protection of his dad. I cried for my dad, and I didn't cry for my daughter. It would have been a lot easier if it would have been someone I didn't know. The next morning, I called my mother-in-law, and I gave her the name of a very good defense attorney. And her response was, what are you people doing to us? I felt so betrayed. The normal thing to do is work it out as a family. We would be apologizing to Grace, and Grandpa would tell her how sorry he was for what he did. At a young age like that, that goes a long ways to healing. Now, if I didn't know this girl and stalked her and dragged her into my car, to me, that's a whole different scenario. When they told us to get an attorney, that was a 180-degree turn because we thought we was going to work this out as a family. Steve was originally charged with two counts of lewd and lascivious conduct against a minor. As far as I know, each count comes with a minimum sentence of three years in prison. And I'm very lucky. I, I, I got a year of county jail time. A county year, which is effectively eight months. I'm so thankful that it was discovered because I'm quite sure that I would have done this again and I could be sitting in prison the rest of my life. My husband has to register as a sex offender every year. I'm very angry. I've been angry for a long time. And I don't know how it's going to affect my granddaughter, but there's two sides to every coin. I mean, it's not just her that's been hurt by this. My parents have definitely held this against my wife. Cat accused me of knowing what was going on and let it continue. I feel kind of betrayed because I did the best that I knew how to do. His mom is beyond dysfunctional. I wonder, what does a person have to say to herself in order to make sleeping with the molester of her grandchild a possibility? What has hurt the most is not being able to see my granddaughter. I fear that my granddaughter may have been told that I'm some kind of evil monster for what I did. Grace really wants to see her grandma and grandpa again, and she talks about it all the time. I do want my parents and my kids' lives. My family is the most important thing to me. I think about the possibility of a reunion between Grace and her grandma, but the idea of being in the same room with her makes me want to hurl. Todd. Yes. And you're Todd. Yes. All right. Have a seat. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you.
you guys. Tell me what you hope to accomplish today. My daughter really wants to get closure. She, I would love that for her, to get some closure, to get some healing for her. It won't happen by accident, and it won't just happen on its own. It won't just like, well, okay, that's in the past. Let's just ignore it and move on. That won't give you what you're looking no, for. That's why we're here. First things are first. How do we deal with all of these questions that she has now? Is what I did with Grandpa wrong? Is it wrong to want to see Grandma and Grandpa again? If I never told, if I had stopped him, if I had never let it happen, then none of this would happen. What do you think about her seeing him again? He's not allowed to see her again until she's 18. I understand. Tell me what you think. I feel utterly ashamed of him. I feel so sickened by what he did and everything he said about it since I feel utterly betrayed because we trusted him and when I think about what he did I feel physically sick when I think of my mother-in-law on some level I feel it even stronger because he admitted what he did to our face and served some time and there was a sense of peace about that but she has been in denial for so long that her lack of personal accountability and culpability here has been driving us just crazy. I feel as though she's betrayed us again. Well, I'm told that you haven't cried about your daughter being molested, but you have cried about your father going to jail. Does that strike you as odd? Coming up. I got to tell you, I believe I'd have choked the son of a bitch till they pulled me off of him. And later, Dr. Phil confronts the man who molested Grace. I didn't even realize it was against the law. You didn't know that it was against the law to have sex with a six-year-old child. You haven't even told your wife what happened. I got off. Every mom is an expert. We now return to Saving Grace in the Dr. Phil house. My mother-in-law, I feel as though she's betrayed us again. What kind of relationship did you have with them before this happened? We didn't have a lot in common. It would take an effort for me to find something that I could have affection for. Did you tell them how you felt? No. I tried to find something that I could like so that I could love them because they were my husband's parents. And I actually really admired my mother-in-law. How do you feel about her now? I think that she's very selfish. You said you felt like she betrayed you by not telling you what happened at the time, and you feel like she's betrayed you again in the way she's handled this since, correct? Yes. What was the moment in time that you found out what your father did to your daughter? I couldn't believe it. I, I, I basically went numb. What did you say to him the first time you spoke to him? He came in and said, do you have something you need to tell us? And at first he looked kind of shocked and wide-eyed, and then he sat down, and it didn't take him long. Within a couple of minutes, he admitted to what he had done. I felt pity for him, honestly. He was so pathetic. My father, head down, just looking broken. How do you feel about your mother and father at this point? I'm sad that I that we don't have a relationship right now. We haven't for since the since the event. Um, disappointed in how they've responded to us during this whole time. It's like
he wasn't taking full responsibility for his action. Yeah, it was, I'm sorry, I was in a haze. I was possessed. Yeah, right, but I think one. he even said at one point, there's more than one person affected here. I'm a victim too. Well, I'm told that you haven't cried about your daughter being molested, but you have cried about your father going to jail. I can't explain it, but I haven't. I haven't once cried for my daughter in this whole thing. <sighs> so you cry for the perpetrator, but not for the daughter. Does that strike you as odd? Yes, it does. I'm ashamed of it. Listen, I, I'm not trying to be critical here. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm just trying to see what I have to deal with. And you seem to have had compassion for your father. I, I got to tell you, I believe I'd have choked the son of a bitch till they pulled me off of him. I'm sorry, I don't get that. Do you I, get it? I don't, and I think that that's one of the things that we were wrestling with in the very beginning, those first few weeks when they were calling all the time, and I was being accused of isolating ourselves and pushing them away, and yeah, I was doing that. <laughs> I was trying to circle the wagons around my family. And this person... That you, that you say you have this compassion for, and I understand he's your father, I get that, that you feel sorry for and, and that you, you've shed many a tear for, is the person who hasn't even given you a sincere apology for what he did, but he still ranks higher than your daughter. I did not looked at it that way. Well, is there any other way to see it? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm trying to find out what kind of relationship you have with your daughter. Because one male authority figure has betrayed her and hurt her and victimized her, and it seems like the other may be emotionally unavailable. Yeah. Do y'all know what happened? I know what Grace has told me ha happened. Wouldn't it be yet another tragedy if that little girl was walking around in this world she was the only one that really knew what happened. Because your father minimizes it. He trivializes it. Your mother minimizes it, trivializes it. Didn't even report it. I want to talk to your mother and father. I want to find out what we're dealing with here. See, I'm all about getting everything on the table. And I want you two to watch me talk to them. Can you handle this? You haven't yet. Can you handle hearing the truth? Because I'm going to put the two of you in a room, and it's time that you hear what happened with your daughter. Coming up. She says he put his finger inside, and it hurt. What did you say to yourself at the time? I wasn't me. I hate to use the word possessed, but if something else was controlling my thinking. Are you kidding me? This for Better Friday. Her dream wedding. What do you say I do? Fireworks will go off. Ah! Not, becomes not, his not. worst nightmare. Joseph, what is it? Don't you love it? Y'all have to work this out. Tyler Perry's For Better or Worse. All new Friday, 9, 8 central. Saturday. How did you come to suspect that your brother was the Unabomber? Oprah sits down with Ted Kaczynski's brother, plus the King of Queens leading lady, Leah Remini. Where are they now on an all-new night, Saturday? here we now return to the dr phil house can a family heal after a grandfather sexually molests his six-year-old granddaughter cat and todd have cut off all communication with grace's grandparents since the incident cat says it would have been easier if her in-laws would have just died 
Well, I'm about to talk to Steve and Ann right here in this room. And because Kat is so nervous about seeing Steve and Ann for the first time in two years, I've decided to put her and Todd behind this two-way mirror to allow them to watch my interview with the man that molested their young daughter.
You have no reaction to this whatsoever. Do you know how many times she must have been standing there with him thinking, I wish I could hear footsteps in the hall. I wish somebody would come in here and save me. And they didn't come. And this is what this little girl had experienced when she told you what you covered up. She said it just out of the blue when I was giving her a bath. And I said, well, that must have been an accident. I said, Grandpa wouldn't do that. And so then I got her ready for bed. She was fine. She finds the courage to tell her grandmother what happened. She looked fine to me. She didn't act funny. I just put her to bed. I was so shocked when I heard that come out of her mouth. I didn't know what to do. I let her down. Yeah, I think. Is there a reason you hadn't told her about this? I should have. But you didn't. I know. It. But yet you come in here, and I got to tell you, with a certain pious attitude, and I don't want communication and health in this family, you haven't even told your wife what happened. Coming up. He said, I put my hands between her legs thinking it would be something she liked, like giving her piece of candy. How would you answer the question, Grandpa, why did you do this to me? I had drifted away from God till the devil had a, a chance to take control. So basically, you deny accountability. It wasn't me. It was the devil. Come on. to saving grace in the Dr. Phil house. You come in here, and I gotta tell you, with a certain pious attitude, and I don't want communication and health in this family, you haven't even told your wife what happened. He said, she ran her fingers through my hair, and it was like looking into the eyes of a 20-year-old. He said, I put my hands between her legs thinking it would be something she liked, like giving her a piece of candy. Oh, my God. I got aroused, so I unzipped my pants. I asked her to touch it. She didn't want to continue. I'm not making excuses, but it was the devil. I know she's the victim, but I'm a victim myself. I don't think... The devil made him do it. I don't buy that. My feeling is that he had those thoughts in the past and that an opportunity arose and he snatched it. So she ran her fingers through your hair. She acted like she liked it and you didn't know it was wrong. Did I get that right? Yes. All through your life, you knew that it would be wrong for an adult to have lewd and lascivious behavior with a minor. You knew that, right? Yes, your I compass know. was clear. I know this is wrong. Right. And then, when she started putting her fingers through your hair, you seemed to lose focus on what was right and wrong, correct? That's when it started. And now, you know again that it was wrong. Yes, looking back, I, obviously I can see it was wrong from the first so sign i didn't has the devil turned you loose well in, in so many words i i how did that happen because i i found the lord again well you said i didn't think that she would tell anybody and i'm quite sure if she hadn't told i'd have done it again he said that When my father-in-law admitted that if he had not been caught, he would have done it again. It was shocking and hard to hear, but it was also so vindicating. Would you have covered it up again? I don't know how long I could have gone on knowing what she said. I didn't realize the harm that it could have caused.
caused her. She came to you for help, and you denied her that help. That's exactly what happened. And so you two had her trapped in a conspiracy of silence. You weren't ever going to tell. You denied it when you were asked about it. Right. I... And you weren't going to tell because you didn't want to mess up your storybook world. My only concern was that she be safe and that I was never, ever going to leave her alone with Grandpa again. So you knew it wasn't an accident. I you knew he had done it. I felt in my heart that something had happened. And your decision was to do nothing about it. Did you not think that her parents were the ones that had the right to make that decision? I feel responsible for how my granddaughter is. I don't know how she is. I do not know how she is. Do you deserve to know? Yes. Really? Why? Yeah, I do. Because she's entitled. I was going to keep her safe. These are pictures that she's drawn. Why did you do that, Grandpa? This is her talking about herself. I wish I was perfect. And you understand the context in which that occurs, but now I am damaged. Now I am dirty. Now I have done something wrong. And she hears other people saying, stinky, skinny, ratty hair, big face, baloney breath. She hears all of these people saying all these bad things because she's damaged goods now, right? Here she is. Help me. And here we have the bad room. But you get it. You get it. You would like to apologize to her, correct? Yes, I would. And if you apologized to her, what would you say? I would tell her that what I did was a terrible thing, that it should never have happened that it was not her fault in any way. But that's it? You, you've taken this young girl's innocence, wandered up, thrown it over in the corner, and that's it. That's your, just, it wasn't your fault, shouldn't have happened. Well, no, I didn't want her to think that somehow she encouraged this to happen. How, how would you answer the question, Grandpa, why did you do this to me? Not was it wrong or right, she knows it's wrong. I had drifted away from God. I got further away from him until the devil had a, a chance to get in and take control. So basically, you would deny accountability. It wasn't me. It was the devil. And so that's that stuff that you said about it was exciting. It was like being back in high school. We should just ignore that. I was shocked how time after time after time, Dr. Phil was giving him the opportunity to take full responsibility, and he never did it. I so hope your theory of devil taking over and choreographing your life is wrong, because if you're right, and he did it once, he could do it again. I would have felt so much better if you had said, I lost my way. I failed to hold myself to the reasonable standard. I allowed myself to hedonistically cave to perverted feelings. I recognize that, I own that, and I will do whatever it takes to make sure that never, ever happens again. But instead, I heard you say, I'm a victim too. This was done to me. Feel sorry for me. If it was allowed, would you trust yourself with her again? I would, yes. How about you? Coming up. Did you think he would do it the first time? No. You didn't see it coming before. What makes you think you would be able to see it coming now? Isn't that what we would work out? You molested her, you covered it up. That sort of drives the conversation up in the family meeting. Saturday.
you change your tub. If it was allowed, would you trust yourself with her again? I would, yes. How about you? Yes. How would she? I feel that he won't ever do that again. Did you think he would do it the first time? No. You didn't see it coming before. What makes you think you would be able to see it coming now? Well, probably because we've been through this now. She's pulling her opportunity right now. He's been in counseling for nearly two years. He spent eight months in away. Away, is that a, a nice word for a prison? Jail. Yeah, in two years of therapy and eight months in jail. And he still says, wasn't me. So we should entrust her to you because you'll watch out for her and protect her. You don't think I've learned something from this? I oh, have. I'm looking hard, man. I'm digging, I'm digging, I'm digging. I'm still hearing you say, he went away. He went away. You don't want to say the ugly words, do you? If she were smart, she would be distancing herself right now from you. You can't get your mind around it. And showing us that she's learned something. It's different because you say, molesters, they stalk little girls and they use candy and get them into a van and, and then they molest them. That's what a child molester is, right? That's Chester Molester right there. That's what we know, and you're different than that, right? You didn't have to stalk because you had a relationship. You had the ultimate power, the ultimate opportunity, the ultimate ability to get next to her and abuse her. I hadn't thought of it that way before, but I felt all the more sad because he had opportunity because we trusted him. And it's hard not to feel guilty myself for having trusted them. You violated the most sacred trust ever. You went to a child in your family and you chose to molest her. The devil didn't choose it, you chose it, and you chose it rationally, and you chose it logically, and you chose it across time. I have worked with molesters of every size, shape, and form. Let me tell you, there ain't a damn thing unique about you. You're not any different than the guy in the van with the pictures and the candy. You just had better opportunity. You don't own it yet. You can't change what you don't acknowledge. And you sit there and hold his hand and say, oh, no, he's fine. She made her choice. You got a problem. And for you to say, I would never do it again, is absolutely non credible. You can't say that because you didn't know you are going to do it this time. And I don't hear any insight. You call it going away and offending. But it's a lot uglier than that, isn't it? Yeah. Offending is it's kind of a nice word that rolls off your tongue. It doesn't exactly capture a six-year-old girl masturbating granddaddy. That's the ugly reality of it. Why couldn't we start out the communication through counseling with the four of us or the five of us? <laughs> Well, I think you kind of foreclosed those options when you covered up for him. You molested her, you covered it up. That sort of dries the conversation up in the family meeting. Isn't that what we would work out? You were in denial then, you're in denial now. I am, okay. Right. And the moment where he turned to my mother-in-law and said, you're still in denial, I felt relieved and vindicated. I thought, oh, it's not just me. I'm not the only one who sees this. If you met with her and she said, Grandma, why did you tell me no and you stood by him? How would you answer that? I would uh, just have to tell her that what I did was so wrong, so very wrong, and that I don't know how I could have done that to her because she's so special and so precious and that I love her so much. How do you feel towards him right this minute? Look at him and tell him. I don't know. Frantic, disgusted. Yeah, you do. Angry. Yeah, you do. I would tell her it's all my fault. It's Grandma's fault. I do think we need to have a meeting. I want to talk to the parents here 
and see if they're willing to sit down. Okay? Sit tight. Coming up. I don't know if I want to meet right now. I recommend that we do sit down, the four of us. This is going to be so hard for you. Dion and his Super Saturday at Kohl's. For a limited time only. Dr. Phil House. Kat says that as a mother, she perceives both grandparents to be a danger to Grace. She says Anne would have never revealed what happened that night if Grace hadn't spoken up. Now, two years later, Kat says she still hasn't gotten a sincere apology from Anne for hiding the ugly truth about her 64-year-old husband molesting Kat's young daughter. I'm about to bring the four adults into the same room. It's time for them to finally come face to face. I don't know <clears throat> if I want to meet right now. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. So what do you think? Thank you. I have some things you said. For two and a half years, I see no growth. I see no change. I see she's made a choice to be with him and not not have a relationship with her granddaughter. She wants to just sweep it under the rug. Do you think your mother should be around your daughter? No. I want her to be able to see her grandmother, but her grandmother is not ready. She's having to process what she learned today, because I told her the truth, mm -hmm. unvarnished and straight yes. up. She's hard-headed and she's in denial, but she's not an evil woman. Yeah. But in the meantime, yeah, we can play all the semantics games we want. We all know what happened. I recommend that we do sit down, the four of us. And I recommend that you say what you think. All right, I'll be right back. Are you okay? This is gonna be so hard for you. I know. You have to be able to do it? Don't do it because you have to. Do you feel you can do it? Do it. Yes. Are you scared? Yeah. If you or anyone you know suspects someone is a pedophile and molesting the children in your life, please call the authorities or the Child Protective Services Agency in your area. Thank you and goodbye. Watching my mother-in-law and father-in-law being interviewed and hearing my father-in-law admitted that if he had not been caught, he would have done it again. I had never heard that before. I suspected it, I felt it in my heart, but I didn't know that he admitted that. 
I hear that they are very desperately hoping that they'll have a relationship with us again. But I didn't hear what I was hoping to hear. I didn't hear that they're ready. That interview that you gave with them and all the points that my wife and I have been talking about over the last two years, he made so crystal clear to them. So I was very, very pleased with that. Dr. Phil definitely made it clear to me that my perspective was somehow skewed, that me looking at my dad with sympathy and and not having that with my daughter, there's something, there's something wrong there.